Welcome back. Okay, alt leveling. We are a week into the Shadowlands expansion, so maybe you want to get your alt leveled up. Maybe you're just wondering what's up with this new Threads of Fate leveling system that you've heard about, or perhaps you've just clicked on this because you want to know how to level up a new character as fast as is possible. Well, Good news for you is that uh, through creative use of game mechanics, the latter is very much possible as well. Threads of Fate, though, is a bit of a new and confusing, mysterious thing. It may not make as much sense as things such as the Wild Deal from Drop.com, today's sponsor, who have got both my daily driver keyboard, the Drop.com Enter, and of course, headset, the Drop X Sennheiser PC. 37X, both of them together for 150 bucks. Yes, the combined price of them should be 210 bucks, you know, for all of this great stuff. But there you go, 150 on the Cyber Monday deal. Pretty wild. And I can't imagine better price to performance here, uh, honestly speaking. I mean, this is not budget gear. PC 37X, 55K sales, 4.9 rating. It's been what I've been using on Shadowlands, right? It's called the Epic Sennheiser sound you'd expect. It's a great sounding mic with a hardware. Mute as well, it's pretty awesome, and really great comfort. And this is what it sounds like on Discord. Then as for the Enter, well hey, you've heard about that before, they've brought it onto the channel, and uh, it's my daily driver, it's the best Mac board for the money, in my opinion, even more so this incredible bundle, you know, the build quality, the key strike, I mean, it's such a unit, absolutely great board, especially I'd say with the Halo Trues, they're my favorite switches. So, you can check out the deal at that link down below. A big thanks to Drop for sponsoring us for, I think, well over a year now, and with that said, let's get into the video. First up, an explainer of what's going on. So, you will get a choice when your new character enters Ouroboros, right? Leveling the normal way or turning on Threads of Fate. And this option will open up to you, assuming one character in your account has completed the first stage of the Covenant campaign, which, by the way, is when you unlock world quests. Now, Threads of Fate replaces the leveling campaign of Shadowlands with four quests, one basically to aid each of the zones. And these quests are progressed along by doing bonus objectives, by doing side quests, dungeons, and world quests, and even things like rares. And they give about 25 to 30% of a level, depending on your level, and of course, if you've got war mode turned on. Now, turning on Threads of Fate is permanent, which is an interesting thing because the game does actually allow you to level through the regular campaign for a bit and then turn Threads of Fate on. Now, basically, turning Threads of Fate on, it deactivates the main campaign, it unlocks all of the zones and their world quests, and it lets you immediately pick your covenant. You then, of course, just level by doing the zone-wide objective quests, and here is a table of what each type of content on those quests is actually um, worth, right, in terms of the quest completion that you get. So, that's what's up there. And you can see it does take a lot, that's quite a lot of stuff. Now, some activities are worth more XP than others on that table, so while killing rares and spamming a dungeon, uh, you know, can be a fine thing to do, they're not particularly helpful in the grand scheme of things there. But more in dungeons in a bit. Now, there are only four or five bonus objectives in each zone, so realistically speaking, you'll have to do a variety of stuff in the zone you're in to complete the zone-wide objective. Now, in terms of how clearing these objectives actually gets you, well, for us, doing all four with a 30% war mode bonus took us 20% away from level 60. So, yes, that would be level 59.8. Uh, yes, that's a bit short of 60, so you'd want to, of course, throw in a few extra side quests. And that was with us using, um, you know, using the war mode bonus. Now, you don't need to do the zone-wide quest objective things, but they definitely are worth doing along the way because they do give you a good chunk of XP and some decent loot. So that's how it works. Why would you want to do it? Well, the main reason is freedom in doing content. Technically, you can get some anima towards your covenant, but it's a minor amount and basically isn't worth thinking about. What about leveling speed then? Well, XP is not placed along a tight linear path when you're doing Threads of Fate, very much unlike the regular campaign, which is pretty damn efficient to do. So in principle, Threads of Fate does feel a bit slower. 
Broadly, you are still in between that 5 and 10 hours to hit level 60 from level 50, depending on your speed and if you are leveling with a group. Now, on launch, it took us 11 hours to hit level 60, but that was with us being half delirious and also spending a whole bunch of time doing world PvP. As for our solo Threads of Fate run, that took about eight and a half hours to hit level 60 from 50. It was not a super efficient run though in terms of pathing and general combat, so overall an efficient Threads of Fate run would be getting you about six hours, maybe six and a half. Um, but for the vast majority of people will definitely say this, the more tight and directed experience of the campaign will lead to higher XP gains per hour. You can then creatively use the mechanics of Threads of Fate, but more on that later. Overall then, Threads of Fate is another option, it does feel pretty different to play, but it's not fundamentally faster, and it certainly does take a bit of a hit to XP per hour from just the lack of a tight directed quest flow, one that you can of course then plug an add-on like Azeroth Autopilot into. So yes, it's not really speed leveling, it's just another form of leveling. If you have a good group of friends and you want that old school dungeon grinding experience, then you can level with a group by spamming dungeons. And if you do that, yeah, you'll get in between six and eight hours to cap. Of course, that'll heavily depend on your speed. Really good players can get around six. So first, you will want to, if you plan to do this, pick up all of the aid quests for each zone. Get, you know, get those, and then just spam the dungeons. Now, spamming the dungeons to level 59 will almost be enough dungeon boss, bosses killed to complete your aid quest for each zone. So once you hit around level 59, you can then just hop out of the dungeons, you can finish off the aid quest for each zone, hand them in, and cap. Now, overall, your speed will vary massively depending on your dungeon clear efficiency, and you've only got access to one dungeon per zone. So yes, it can get quite dull, but if AOE clearing dungeon mobs while having a laugh is your thing, it's totally possible. If you're playing solo, the bonus objectives make it hard to recommend, but it, it has its niche. So look, this can be a bit mindless, but it also can be played like speedily at a high skill level like Diablo 3's adventure mode. If you take a quick trip to Gameplay Psychology 101, that'll tell you, oh, it's high skill, low difficulty, it can be sort of relaxing. So yes, you can basically get into a groove with Threads of Fate. Then additionally, it's also an opportunity to do the side quests that you may have skipped on your main, many of them are great, and that could help you get, say, Lore Master while leveling. One advantage of much of the XP being in the form of bonus objectives and world quests is that if you've got a group of players, you can spread out within that world quest or bonus objective zone and really clear it up quite quickly. And if you do that, you can do them fast. You'll be in that case less prone to quest specific bottlenecks and uh, you can guarantee that the progression will be shared amongst your party. You can easily, of course, get out of sync with each other when you are doing regular leveling, but that's less so in Threads of Fate because so many things are just a big completion bar in a world quest or a bonus objective. So you can do that and just get a group together and just bomb through an area. Okay, next up for, uh, well, some creative use of game mechanics that I think really is the main speed benefit here that most people will see. And I actually think this is a, well, I think this is the use for Threads of Fate if you want to get characters capped quickly. So the leveling of this expansion can be strange because as we all know, you can hit level 60 far faster than you can finish the campaign, right? Like if you do Bastion to a high level of completion because the XP is so efficient there and then you plow through Maldraxxus and then with Arden Wheel, you do a bunch of the side quests as well, you will hit level 60 really, really quick and far before you've completed the campaign. But of course we all know that finishing the campaign is what actually unlocks endgame. Well, here's the thing. This is where Threads of Fate comes in. You can maybe follow the Azeroth autopilot route, or you could just do the campaigns of the zones while picking up all of the handy and convenient to do nearby side quests, right? You can do that for extremely fast XP per hour. And then once you hit like level 59.9, you can return to Ouroboros and you can just turn on Threads of Fate. This will automatically complete the leveling campaign for your character. 
because that's what Threads of Fate, technically speaking, does. And that does mean, then, that you can just get a tiny amount of XP from a zone, and you'll hit level 60. So you will actually benefit from the super dense experience gains of doing the regular campaign, and then also be able to benefit from how Threads of Fate basically knocks out the campaign. Pretty cool. This is the fastest way to level up in Shadowlands for most people. Now, to get the most out of this, you will want to use War Mode during the Maw intro. You'll then want to, of course, decide if you are comfortable using it during the campaign. Um, now, it just depends there, really, what your own what your own thoughts are. Personally, we would always do it because for us on Alliance EU, it's 30% and it's definitely, definitely worth the odd disruption. Now, overall, I'd say for most people, it's hard to beat Azeroth Autopilot's expert routing and a little bit of practice removes human error, so you can get the benefits of that and then skip the campaign with Threads of Fate. Now, should you use Threads of Fate to level alts otherwise? I mean, you can. Threads of Fate is good enough. It's a great way to do side quests and to get lore master, maybe doing some dungeons while leveling. That's a good way to get a newbie healer or tank leveled up and also get some experience at the same time. Or maybe it could just be a breath of fresh air. So now that we've basically argued in a way why you should do it and why for pure speed you maybe shouldn't do Threads of Fate, we still do want to give you uh, just a few other little hints and tips and things. Usually, I would say use war mode. In my experience, people just want to get stuff done. They're not going to engage in PvP that often. And even if you don't want to use it, you can still use it because you can turn war mode on right before you go to Oribos and hand in the aid quests. Because that aid quest is worth a bunch of XP. Why not hand it in when your character's got a 10, 20, or 30% XP boost? Then another war mode tip, so if you're in war mode and you're doing it one zone at a time, you should still do it in leveling order. And I know that kind of defeats some of the purpose of this system, but you've got to remember, like, enemy players doing the campaign in Revendreth, they'll be level 58. And if you start in Revendreth, you'll be like level 51, 52, which is just asking for trouble because they'll rack you. Now, another thing, world quests, uh, some of them are quite quick to complete, and, and often they are the same world quests that max level players are doing. So. If you can get in with the legion of people who are just clearing the map on their endgame characters, just go there, tag a bunch of mobs, and you can get those done pretty quickly in our experience. Now, then, since so much of the Threads of Fate stuff is, and uh, the combat at least, is in bonus objectives, we'd again also say it's very important to actively play your character, right? Choose the talents for killing mobs very fast, your short cooldown and burst, your AoE heavy talents, things like that are absolutely key. I mean, if you play Threads of Fate, just general content, like you're maybe doing, uh, you know, a bit of a dungeon and you're really trying to go, you'll actually go a lot faster. Also then, I mean, obviously, look at the map and plan a route around the available objectives. This is the sort of thing where we can't just give you a leveling route for Threads of Fate because, you know, the, the world quests are going to be in different places, right? Uh, so if you land in without a plan, you don't think about your character's movement, you're going to spend a whole bunch of time thinking, you know, oh, what's the next thing to do? And if that's how you're navigating, you're not going to be navigating efficiently. Um, so even just a simple plan can help you a lot there. But that's basically it. All in all, Threads of Fate is a good choice to have. If you want to level up with pure speed, it's not the fastest, but yes, it can also allow for a more dynamic and varied leveling experience than the linear path, though it still can feel a bit fractured. To be honest with you, I'm, I think it's very clear this could have just used more tuning in terms of experience numbers, bonus objective completion, and things like that. This was added in quite late in beta, very late, in fact, and that was still at a time where leveling XP values were all over the place. Uh, so this does feel like a first pass. I would not be surprised if this flow improves drastically in future patches. But that's basically it for the Threads of Fate and generally alt leveling guide in the Shadowlands expansion. If you absolutely want to get an alt leveled up as fast as is possible, basically, Follow our launch leveling guide, right? <laughs> Follow that, doing the campaign. Maybe, I would say, work in a few more world quests. Uh, or not world quests, I'm sorry. A few more, um, you know, the side uh, quests. Work in a few more of those. You can afford to do a lot more of them in Bastion, as an example. And they're pretty efficient there. Um, and then just once you're about to cap, bam, turn on Threads of Fate. Oh, you'll be done, right? You'll skip the campaign. I mean, how many of us hit level 60 and then had 
an hour of gameplay, maybe even a little bit more, uh, to do going through Revendreth when we were level 60. Threads of Fate basically is a button that turns that off. So no matter what, there is a good speed gain for you to be had on your alt characters. But with that said, that is it for me. Of course, a big thank you to our sponsor for today's video. It truly does help everything that we're doing. And uh, I mean, hey, they, I mean, they, it's dropped. They do really cool stuff. And uh, man, what a, what a combo. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.